So for quite a while now, I've had this irritating little diesel leak, and it tends to happen when we fill the vehicle up to its full capacity. And there's just a little drip if uh, if we fill it up to the gunnels, which is quite irritating. And uh, I am actually suspecting the sender unit seal, but I don't know yet. Uh, basically, I ran the vehicle till the fuel light came on. Uh, solidly and I packed it up. So I am personally curious to see roughly what quantity of diesel is in this vehicle. So we'll get underneath and uh, get cracking. Well, on first sight we can see a bolt at each corner so that's good news and you can see we've got a bit of a dark patch there where it leaks. Now it has actually been tapped into as we do have a, a diesel heater so I want to check uh, aspects of that, you can just see the, the pipe there. So we'll spray a bit of penetrating fluid on all the bolts. So it looks like we've got a bit of, a bit of wiring here, possibly for the, the sender unit. Uh, they should just pull apart and disconnect. And we've got two Jubilee clips there. So somebody's been here before for some reason, um, and, a, and another clip there. And then the two, I presume that's the flow and the return for the diesel. That's just a breather. That doesn't go anywhere. And I think that might be a breather too. It says that's the main feed of diesel from the pump. When you're pumping it in, that, that's, uh, that's going directly in the tank. That's the largest one. So we'll uh, undo... I think this clip, and I'll just see how long the hoses are and things and the wiring, I'll undo the wiring. So that's the the double Jubilee clip removed and we've loosened the hose and we've undone the wiring I presume for the sender unit and there's just this one. Now, one thing what I do is I'll get a pair of swan necks on a pipe that's a bit stubborn. That is quite tricky getting the swan necks in here. But we've got it moving now, so that's good. So I should be able to remove that. And that pulled off pretty easy. Hopefully it should be should be the same for this fella. I think I'll try dropping the tank a little because it's gonna come off anyway. So I've removed a couple of 13mm bolts and we've yet to do the back ones. Now, I think I'm just going to get under here and support this so I can lower it down in increments. It's either that or a jack or a block of wood, but I feel too heavy. Obviously this seal's coming off. That's cleared now. Well, on second thoughts, I've decided to put a jack with a block of wood in. I just want more control over it going down. I don't want to rip any hoses off or have troubles, etc. I just want to control its descent. So that is all four bolts out, and that's the pipe for the, the diesel eater, which goes somewhere over the top of the tank. You can't see, but I've just unclipped it, just to put a bit of slack in it. And you can see we've got it on a jack nearly central but there's a bit of a ridge in the tank there uh, I've decided slightly off will be fine and we'll just gently lower it in increments and keep an eye on the hoses there was actually quite a bit more diesel in there than I was expecting we've lowered it down and all's well you can see the Chinese diesel heated pipe there and one thing I should have done was liberate the those two fuel pipes there from that clip. I've just quickly done that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark these two hoses up uh, prior to removal, just so I know which is which. And then we'll drag the tank out and inspect it in the, the full light of day. So when you remove these hoses, you're going to get some diesel spill. So I'm just putting it in the tank like so. Um, take great care not to drop the clip in the tank. 
So we'll just let those drain in a minute. And one thing I want to share with you, you can see the, there's uh, traces of leaking diesel, I would say, from the tank. From the, uh, the sender unit area, as a guess, we've discovered something. We are actually going to reprime the diesel, so I'm going to have to uh, show you how to do that at the end of the video. And the sender unit's there, and I think I know exactly what the problem is. So there is the sender unit, and there's quite a bit of diesel in, really, to see the, the fuel light had come on solid. I'll just attempt to show you. Probably about an inch. Quite a bit of weight in the tank, you know, if I pick it up. So we'll just remove these bolts from the sender unit. So these nuts are eight millimeter. So I'm just gonna work here with a lot of them. Um, before I go too far, I'm just gonna take a note of how the sender unit is in relation to the tank. There's a little fluke there at the front of the tank. So I'll just remember that when it comes to reinstalling. So that's uh, six nuts liberated and the sender unit gingerly wiggled out. Now, this filter here needs checking for cleanliness before we reinstall anything. And I think I've worked out exactly why this leak has occurred. And it's basically whoever fitted the heater, there is a correct fitting for this and they didn't bother with it and just drilled straight into the sender unit. And that explains why I've got diesel dribble marks all over and it's great how they have saved the money in buying the correct fitting and I'm now left with a problem but that's the way life goes so we'll look at this seal it does just feel a bit hard actually and we'll change it while we're in here but I don't actually think that that was the problem this pipe's quite it wiggles it's quite loose so diesel being very searching would have found a way outwards. So I'm going to have to seal this a lot better than the last person did in order to use the motorhome. The new seal uh, is looking a little bit meatier on the right than the used one, but that could just be because it's compressed. So I've took a cloth and and cleaned up what I can. Um, it's not loose material that seems to come away with a bit of a scratch. So I'll give it a clean bed to rest the new seal on. One thing I've noticed is we've got the the date of the tank was potentially produced 30th of April 1993. There's actually quite a bit of flotsam and jetsam in the tank so I think while it's off I'll give it a a rinse out and filter the diesel. So we've now got the sender unit out and this filter just comes apart just with a little pull. A little pull and a wiggle is all that's required. And I think I'm going to give that a little clean, not that there's much dirt in it. And there is a spring. So I'm just going to flush that out. I think I might use a bit of uh, petrol if I've got any. I'll fill in that. Bit of white spirit. Regarding my pesky fuel pipe, what I've decided to do is put it back together with JB Weld. I cleaned everything, I put a washer on the top, uh, everything got scratched up to a high sheen, and I'm just gonna have to do that and hope for the best. And if that works, happy days. There's a zip tie on the base which I've covered in JB Weld, just so I can get a bit more um, adhesive in there. I've spent quite a bit of time in here fishing with a syringe lashed to a screwdriver to try and get these deposits out and then when they come out they go straight in this funnel with a bit of kitchen roll to fill to the diesel. Hopefully you can see the, the dirt in the diesel. And I wish I could get my hand in but that was the best I could come up with. If you've got any better ideas stick them in the comments. Well, I don't think we're ever going to get all the sediment out, but we've yielded a good improvement. And towards the end, I had a, 
add this on the end of a screwdriver just to get the last few bits up so if putting it back together is the opposite of taking it to bits I think it's time we started putting it back together so we get it on and push it down because the spring in the fuel filter to overcome and incidentally I did use um, JB quick weld as the other stuff takes at least a couple of days to cure so I've just taken the opportunity to buff this earth up with some sandpaper prior to, to refitting it. That's all the bolts nipped up. I don't use too much force as they're only tiny. I just need to hold the quarter drive ratchet there. Could use a torque wrench on them. I'd do it very low, perhaps five newton metres. I don't have mine. Uh, on this job, kind of feel where the nip up a little as it compresses the tank seal down. I've got a replacement clip for the fuel, could be a Jubilee clip, um, probably uh, another brand. These are the wires for the sender unit. That one could be a little corroded inside. Obviously that one looks good, so I'm just going to take a screwdriver and scratch it out clean just with a small basic screwdriver just in case, because I do, I do actually like the uh, sender unit to work I'll just score off any dirt that will prevent it making a good contact so I've just flushed it out with a bit of contact cleaner because if you scratch the dirt you should really flush it. So that's the pipes reconnected and it's actually quite heavy empty so I wouldn't entertain doing this without draining the tank down firstly as a, a hell of a weight. So we'll just remove the rag I put on just to denote that which side's which. Well that's everything refitted, we've got the, the new clip on there, the sender unit wiring all reconnected and I did actually use a jack uh, as it made life a little easier. I actually, you've got to get this on first as, it, as you're refitting the tank and if you're struggling um, to get it fully nipped up, just pull that, pull that down and hit the bottom of the tank and it, and it seems to go more or less home. Ok everything looks good, we've got the four tank bolts nipped up so I think what we'll do, we'll put some fuel in it and uh, have a go at starting it up without priming the diesel. Hopefully it will pull the diesel through we'll see here, that's the, uh, the funnel it's shocking in there. The dirt what's came out of the tank. And this was the total amount of diesel, a bit less than half of one of these 25 litre containers. So the next time you're running on empty, uh, bear in mind you ain't got a lot of diesel with a fuel light on, as it won't be able to pick up all of this diesel uh, via the sender unit will be a percentage that it won't get so we'll run out of diesel sooner so it's probably well say a good gallon or so maybe what you could get and I think it's the last gallon it can't get we've got some diesel in and if we do have to reprime it we just push on that crack that nut and get some diesel coming out here uh, but I'm going to stick my neck out looking at this and I think it will prime itself Okay, we'll give it a, a start. See so the fuel gauge has moved, I've put a bit more diesel in it than what we had 